up into Windows. I've already installed the uh, virtual machine drivers so we can see the full resolution. Okay, so this video could use a bit of introduction. So basically what I'm going to be doing in this video is touring the Windows 7 build 6801. So this is an old build of Windows 7 when it was still in development. And uh, I didn't really introduce it in this video, but yeah, that's why I'm doing this little voiceover now. Um, also worth noting, I'm a little bit sick in this video, so it does sound a little bit weird and uh, not as excited as it could be, but uh, there's gonna be another one of these coming out very very soon about a Windows 10 preview Which is a lot more exciting in my opinion, but anyways, uh, that's about it So just uh, keep that in mind and uh, enjoy the video This has got the Windows 7 slash Vista kind of look so the starting Windows is kind of like from the Windows 7 And then like the bar at the bottom looks a lot like Windows Vista boot screen. There we go Oh jeez, it looks like it's outside of the boundaries of the virtual machine already Let's see how things go here. Might have to change the resolution. Oh jeez, this is like extra big. So the biggest change I've noticed so far is if you go down here into the start menu, a lot of the stuff in the start menu looks a lot, a lot similar to Windows Vista and a bit of Windows 7, but basically when you hover over these, uh, I noticed that first off the icons are like totally different, uh, which is good. I like the new icons that they actually have here. They're a lot nicer, especially uh, the computer, not the computer, what was it? It's one of the uh, library icons, and the control panel looks a lot like Windows Vista as well. So they changed some of the icons, but yeah, it's a bit different when you hover over these, but that's about it so far. Uh, let's look at getting started here. So getting started, looks like Windows 7 Ultimate. Uh, huh, they didn't finish it, so they said find out what's new Windows 7 Ultimate, item 1, item 2, item 3. That's kind of a cool, interesting thing here. But yeah, this looks like uh, they just put the Windows 7 wall, or the Windows Vista wallpaper over here. And these don't, icons don't look that good. So this is probably a work in progress thing that they were uh, working on at this point. And yeah, look, all this stuff doesn't really do anything. But yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, they got some of the things to work, but these are, I'm not sure if this program was in Windows Vista because they might have ported it over. Um, over here, I also see an icon. It says no messages. The Windows Solution Center, no issues detected. Let's open the Windows Solution Center and let's see what this is all about. Oh, uh, spyware and other malware protections. This is like a lot like um, Windows XP and it's searching for malware stuff. Oh, gee, I'm not counterfeiting software. <laughs> but yeah, um, one thing I'm going to do before any it runs out of time is I'm actually going to go ahead and change the time. Now, I'm probably going to go to the control panel to do that. This has a time bomb, so. If it automatically updates the time to the current time uh, using the network, which it has, it's going to time bomb itself. So we're going to make sure it doesn't do that and change the time back because this uh, machine will time bomb itself at approximately uh, July 1st, 2009. So let's change our time somewhere before then. So actually, we can go back into 2008. So we got to go to 2008 and we'll change our time to... Um, Sometime December 2008. So we'll do December 18th, 2008, and that should be good. So now it won't time bomb itself. So Windows Solution Center, back to that. So the Windows Solution Center looks a lot like Action Center from uh, what I could tell. Uh, yeah, it's got all the same stuff. So maintenance and Action Center. Uh, virus protection, which is from Windows XP. I'm not sure if Windows Vista had the same exact thing. But yeah, it's got a lot of stuff here. Um, but yeah, overall the operating system is, is practically Windows Vista all, all over again. Uh, let's go ahead and actually enable air, the arrow theme. Let's see if that's actually in here. Personalization. Uh, it's taking forever to load, but there we go. Oh yeah, it's got some arrow themes and some... Actually, these are different icons. Ooh, the sound effects. That reminds me a lot of the Windows uh, 3.1 Tada boot up logo. But yeah, this looks like a like an Ubuntu 12 uh, wallpaper. But it doesn't look like Arrow is working. Uh, the Arrow glass doesn't seem to be uh, taking effect, no matter what I do. I'm gonna keep it at that just because it's a little different. Let's look at our sounds here. Uh, we've got a f no, well, only one sound pack, so that's like Windows Vista. No, oh, okay, yeah, that that amazing sound. Uh, default beep. So yeah, this has got all the new sounds. I'm not sure if these are exactly the same as Windows Vista, because I haven't used Vista for that long. What? <laughs> it used the fax sent sound to change the actual wallpaper. But anyway, yeah, you get the point. Also, the favorite uh, screensaver of mine is uh, Bubbles. Oh, let's see if it still works in here. Does Bubbles still work? Looks like screensavers aren't working. 
which is kind of a shame. But anyway, that's that. Uh, we've got any uh, mouse pointers? They're still call they're calling it arrow at this point. Windows arrows. That's good. I like the sidebars in this. This is a lot of like Windows Vista, but I think the uh, the background is actually different in this. This is like the new wallpaper for the login screen. But everything else looks well, pretty much just like Windows Vista. Um, and that's just how that is. It's attempted to. Oh no. So here is a blue badge. Now this would unlock some extra features that were only enabled when a uh, Microsoft employee was logged into the system, or aka a blue badge employee. So some more clarification on blue badge. Blue badge was made by Rafael Rivera, and it was made as an app to unlock a lot of the hidden features inside this build. So this build actually had a lot of features, but they were hidden behind uh, a special blue badge protection system. So basically people that were Microsoft employees, full-time employees, uh, had a blue badge, and only they could see the features that were locked. Uh, and this app unlocks all of them, so it unlocks a lot of stuff, and you'll see uh, there's a few things that are pretty crucial to looking like Windows 7 that this app unlocks. And I actually think uh, this is a very cool uh, system that Microsoft made to, you know, prevent other people from seeing features. But of course, people found out about it. But anyways, uh, back to the video. And this will disable full-time employee blue badge checks uh, for currently logged in users. So we're going to go ahead and do that. For changes to take effect, we're going to restart. Go on, but I'm watching you. Alrighty, uh, let's re restart this. So this is uh, revision 3. I think this had some extra features that uh, the other revisions didn't have. But let's quickly go ahead and restart the operating system. And hopefully, I think this might enable the arrow theme. Although I'm not sure. I read about it enabling some other things, but I, I don't really remember at this point. Okay, so I've just run Blue Badge. We just restarted and everything looks a lot different. Actually, this UI looks more like uh, Windows 7 than Windows Vista. So I guess this thing has like a dual UI. Well, this is interesting. If they've got like arrows next to everything, so you can click on them and unpin them. I don't know if it enabled extra programs. Anyway, I didn't remember Windows Media Center being there, but that might just be me. All right, so let's see if we can enable arrow, unless our graphics card doesn't support it. But yeah, this this um, taskbar is a lot more like Windows 7 now. Like everything looks like Windows 7 now, which is bef before it didn't look anything like this. But uh, let's go into our control panel and see if our uh, personalization settings have anything else that we can look at. Let's enable Windows Arrow. So it looks like Arrow still is not working. It's got the little, uh, the Windows Basic style. Uh, let's see if we can enable Classic. So yeah, this has got all the, all the other themes, but Arrow doesn't seem to be working. I'm gonna enable the, uh, the default theme for now. It seems like, uh, it seems like these buttons here are for more of a touch-based operating system. I wonder if they, uh, if they had a little bit more of a, you know, touchscreen plan in mind, but Windows 7 uh, wasn't really a, that good of a touchscreen operating system. It was more so uh, Windows 8 that, you know, went ahead and did that. Let's see our taskbar settings here. So, uh, it looks the same. Yeah, this is like a Windows 7 now. Before it looked more like Windows Vista, but now just with the taskbar, it looks a lot like Windows 7. Um, the thing is, around this uh, start button, there's like a, like an indent, which is like a Windows 7 type thing. Our Windows Vista type thing. I keep mixing the two up. See, they're very similar, but yeah, that's that's interesting. Okay, let's do. Uh, oh, I, it just enabled. Uh, what is this all about? Let's enable tablet PC input panel as well. What's this? Oh, that was just the thing. Uh, look at this. So yeah, it's got tablet PC input. Uh, hello. Let's see if I could type that. Yeah, that's that's not winning anytime soon. So I'm reading up on the blue badge uh, information, and apparently it also enables the desktop background changing uh, carousel type thing. I know that was a bad explanation, but yeah, it enables the carousel so it, the backgrounds uh, can cycle. So let's see if I can get multiple backgrounds to cycle here. And yeah, look, I can I can do multiple textures and change every th 10 seconds. Let's do that. So let's see if it changes now. Apparently this was not available without blue badge. Although I'm not sure why this wasn't available. Oh yeah, there we go. It rotated. Okay, so yeah. Apparently that is a thing now in this version. Uh, it's got some also pretty nice wallpapers. Let's see what wallpapers came with this. Uh, I've got a slideshow that I don't want to shuffle. There we go. So there's a lot of uh, actually pretty interesting wallpapers. I like that one. That's kind of nice. Uh, this one is interesting. But yeah, it's got some interesting wallpapers, which... Uh, I'll see if I can extract these and probably uh, upload these down below in the description so you guys can kind of look at these wallpapers because those are kind of interesting. 
I don't remember these being in any other operating system, although that might just be me. Uh, but yeah, let's see if gadgets still work. I remember in Windows 7 later on they disabled uh, gadget store, uh, but you know, gadgets gadgets work. Although, actually, do they? No, yeah, they do. Now the CPU works. So, looking down here, I found a version of Windows Defender, which uh, usually doesn't come pre-installed. I remember you used to have to download it, and it didn't look like this as far as I remember, but apparently this is what the Windows Defender before Windows 10 Defender came out looked like. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a typical Windows Defender. Uh, I'm not sure if Windows 7 actually had this type of Windows Defender. It's hard to tell, because a lot of this stuff looks like Windows 7, also like Windows Vista, so it's hard to say, but as far as I remember, you couldn't... Maybe you could download this, but I remember Windows Security Essentials was being a thing you can download. Um, but yeah, we've got XPS Viewer, we've got Fax Center, Windows Mail apparently exists in this version still, although uh, it doesn't run anymore. Private Character Editor. But yeah, overall this looks like a pretty complete operating system uh, for being a, one of the beta builds. Uh, I want to try out some more beta builds of Windows, see uh, some more things, but yeah, this doesn't really have that many work in progress things, other than of course like the getting started here. This has a bunch of, you know, things that fill in here. In fact, I haven't even gone on the internet on this thing, um, but let's see what version of Internet Explorer. This should probably be a very typical Internet Explorer, probably a Windows Vista version. Maybe, maybe it is a development version. We'll see what version comes installed in a second here. But yeah, look, item 5. All this other stuff here. Yeah, it looks like they were planning on finishing that sometime later. It looks like uh, our Internet Explorer isn't launching, but, you know, what's new at this point? All right, there we go. Internet Explorer. Uh, we got two of them. I don't think we're going to be able to go very far, but uh, we'll see how things go here. Ask me later. What version of Internet Explorer is this? I'm not sure uh, if this is a beta build or not. Oh yeah, look, it's uh, Windows Internet Explorer 8 Beta, so it's a beta version of Internet Explorer. Uh, protected by copyright law and stuff like that, but yeah, it's also a beta version of Internet Explorer. I'm not sure, it's probably newer than whatever came in Windows Vista service packs, but let's see if we can at least access Google.com on this. Uh, might not work, it probably is going to have some security errors for sure, because usually these things don't last for very long. Um, this uh, version of Windows Media Player looks actually quite a bit different. So it's got, it's got an interesting thing here. So it's it's got like a switch to now playing music, and it looks like this. And it's got um, it's got like a lot of, it's got show lists, and it's got the switch to grid list, probably library mode, switch to full screen mode. So it's got like um, a few extra buttons from what I remember. And it, it actually looks a little better than what actually came out because it's got a list so you can see all the stuff that's game playing. It's a lot like um, like the iTunes uh, mini player. But yeah, that looks, looks pretty nice. And uh, I don't have anything to really play unless they have any demos. I wonder if they still had any demo music. Sample music. Oh, none. Okay, they didn't have any in this build. But yeah, this is a fairly clean installation. So there's not much on here uh, that we can find. Although I do want to see branding... So yeah, this is about it for this uh, build of Windows 7, so it's got a lot of cool things. Oh gosh, it's asking for activation now. But yeah, it's it's got a lot of cool features, especially because it looks like Windows Vista before you run Blue Badge, which is really nice uh, and interesting to me because it's like a good mix between Windows Vista and Windows 7. So if you, know, if you like the look of Windows Vista, but you also want to have a slightly more updated operating system, not like this is going to get updates anytime soon, but I mean, it's kind of cool. It's also a good look into uh, the history of Windows development. Like, I'm interested that they had, like, a blue badge uh, thing that would hide features, which, I mean, they released this version, I think, to the public, or at least they showed it to the public, so it's it's interesting that they uh, that they did the blue badge stuff. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it for this uh, video. Thank you guys for watching, and also let me know if you want to see any more operating system tours like this. Anyways, I'm out. I'll see you in the next one. Ta-da. <laughs> You know, you know, really.